Hello friends. What I'm going to talk in another 40 minutes is about the drugs which are used in invasive fungal infection. I'll cover this entire lecture in four parts. First, we'll start with a little bit of history. We'll see the, how the developments has taken place in the last 30, 40 years. And then we'll see the mechanism of actions of all those drugs, how they develop resistances, following which the laboratory diagnosis and then finally individually will take one after another drug as a separate uh, entity. Now first look at the history, the evolution how it has started. The story starts long back since 1835 and uh, then subsequently one after another one fungus was discovered another disease was discovered and sequentially another drugs were discovered. So it was cryptococcal meningitis which was reported in 1923 United States and uh, subsequently in 1950 you see the molecule nystatin which came into the market as uh, first pollen antifungal agent following which in 1955 the amphotericin B came into the market and uh, then Flucytosine was developed again, it came to the market in 1964. The most important and wide spectrum antifungal agent, that is the fluconazole, which is still date used very widely, came into the market in the year 1990. And it has it is a well tested drug, and till date we know its importance. Following which, in the last two decades, we are with us echinocandines and they are the most important breakthrough investigation as far as antifungal agents are concerned. And the first echinocandine which came in the year 2002 was Casper fungin and uh, followed by Mika fungin in the year 2005 and then Anadula fungin. So little bit about this systemic azoles. In 1981, ketoconazole was introduced. but uh, it was having limited absorption because uh, at the elevated gastric pH and uh, it was not having any intravenous formulation. It was having drug related toxicity, hepatotoxicity, adrenal toxicity, etc. So because of this, it was not did not become so famous in the market. But in 1990, this fluconazole was introduced with the following advantages. It could be administered intravenously or orally and it was having a very predictable pharmacokinetics. It is having a very nice oral bioavailability, improved penetration into anatomically restricted sites. Such